right. So we are going to talk about a tool. FMEA. What is it? Uh, it stands for Failure Mode Effects Analysis, sometimes referred to as Potential Failure Mode Effects Analysis. So failure modes, it's a kind of a, just a fancy way of saying a way that something could fail, a way that something could go wrong, a uh, break. And uh, it, we could say that it's a, a structured analytical tool that can be used by by an organization or a team um, to, to be able to evaluate the potential that something could go wrong. So like if something failed, if a process failed, um, how bad is it? <laughs> how bad would it be if something went wrong in a, in a given process? How, how can we identify the risk early on and, and is there anything that we could do to try to nip it in the bud or alleviate the symptoms or you know, the effects uh, that, that that could have or eliminate the risk altogether. And um, so this tool aligns very closely with the process map. Um, and so if you think we're thinking in like terms of a factory process map would be, you know, okay, the, the widget goes from here to there and it, and it goes through this specific chain. Of course, in software, we're familiar with process maps because the software has definite logist logical paths that it can take, things that happen after another thing. And so this, this can align very well with, with, uh, with what we do. Um, so when we're looking at that, we're saying, okay, well, what are the steps of a given process? Um, and then we're assessing the, the risk of failure at each step in the process map. And so when we're thinking about this tool, we should think of it as a living document, something that is paired with our process map and, and stays sticks with it for as long as that process is in place or, or any time uh, it, it, it gets updated, it revised, the, the FMEA is, is right there along with it and should be, should be updated. Yeah, uh, so, so the, the, uh, the scoring, um, when, we, when we're thinking about this FMEA, we'll get into some details for sure on this, um, but the, the scoring is, is a score of one through 10 and uh, each uh, it's broken down into three uh, categories. We have severity, occurrence, and detection. So severity, we're saying, okay, uh, what is the impact that a failure would have? Um, a one would be something we're not too concerned about. A 10, obviously, very concerned, very bad if, if it failed. And uh, just as a note, an eight or higher is something that we should we should definitely dig into and take a look at. Can we do something there to fix this? And, and sometimes what you have to do is take that, that step that we started with and break it down into additional steps. So you can really try to slice it apart and analyze where, where are the problems in this thing and, and what, could we, what could we do about it? Then you have occurrence. Um, what are the chances that a failure would happen? Um, one being unlikely, 10 being uh, inevitable. Detection, what are the chances that it would be detected, that we would even know that the thing went wrong? Um, would it be obvious? Would, would, could, it, could it be missed? And so then when we, what we do is we take these three uh, factors and we can multiply them together into an RPN or a risk priority number. So it's, the risk priority number is severity, multiplied by occurrence, multiplied by detection. And so that gives you the, your, a numerical value now that you can assign to this thing, this particular process. And a score over 80 should uh, require corrective action. So you think about, okay, if it's over eight, we take action. If, it's, if the total is over 80, you take action. And, and that's really what the FMEA is, is designed to do. It, it helps us to analyze something and then see how can we make this thing better so that hopefully we avoid the problem altogether. So how do we implement this? Well, we're gonna definitely get into the weeds a little bit here. Um, so uh, we start by forming a cross-functional team. Um, and these, the, the team members of this team, they should have key knowledge about a process, a product or service, or customer needs. And it's important that these people be those that have the most knowledge uh, about a, a particular 
you know, the, the, the thing in question or a lot of experience. Um, and then once we have the team, we choose a team leader. And um, we'll talk about more what the team leader does. Uh, so, as, as a team, the, the process, we'll just go through the, 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 the step by step here, but um, the a team would def define the scope of the FMEA. Um, normally, an FMEA would match to the process, process map, so one for one. Um, sometimes, though, uh, as we talked about, you might slice up a, a, a particular process to try to further break it down. So, an FMEA could align to just a portion of the process map, in which case now you'd have you'd be working with multiple uh, tools here to to come to an understanding of the process, and it starts by making sure that all the team members have a very good understanding of what it is that they are trying to examine and analyze. Then we have um, grading the steps, so we grade each step of the in the process uh, with the the scoring system. Um, so for each. Uh, function or process, identify the, the consequences. So we have like down here an example of a basic FMEA. Um, and this is the type of form, if you Google this, there's a lot of examples out there, but this is the, the core. Um, so you have your, your the, the step in question or the process, you have the way it can fail, consequences, severity, causes, etc. Um, so as you're going through that, like we're looking at uh, the uh, consequences, we're asking ourselves, okay, uh, in what way could failure happen? Um, what does the customer experience because of a failure? What happens when the failure occurs? Um, and, and if needed, we, we rewrite things so that it can be clear to understand uh, what, what we're, we're, we're trying to rate. And then we rate the severity. And, and the rating, is it's, it's, it's internal. So um, a seven, is a seven according to how the team feels about it. But you can use that as a, as a gauge, knowing that your, your, your scale is always one to 10. Then we uh, determine the potential root causes. So talking about how something could happen uh, and then rating the occurrence. How often do we feel that this thing could happen? And, and so for each cause, then we identify any current controls that are in place to try to catch these problems. Um, uh, are, there, are there tests or procedures, uh, things that we have in place right now that if something breaks, if something fails, it prevents it from somehow reaching the customer where they see that our system has failed. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, it, it might prevent the, the, the cause from happening, um, but uh, what's the likelihood that we would even know about it if it, if it did break? Uh, will we understand? And then we rate the detection. And, and that's what that that's what that values for. So then, with all of that, we're now we're tr arriving where we can start to get an RPN score um, or the, uh, the the value of, of all of those those three uh, those three points of, of data, and then we can identify uh, corrective actions. What could we do now? You know, if we got a score of eighty or maybe you know you can get you can get very high actually uh it, what should we do now this is a really bad problem uh so you're identifying corrective actions you're assigning someone now that's going to be responsible for implementing said actions and, and now this is where the team leader comes into play because now they're going to kind of take a little bit of ownership of this make sure that you know do the follow-up that this person is going to be working on correcting this problem and um, tracking uh, updates, outcomes, um, and, and getting the team together as needed to, to revise their evaluation of the FMEA. Of like, you know, where we, we've done some corrective action now, how do we feel? How do we feel our, our situation is right now? And so the team leader then has to schedule regular meetings um, to, to be able to review these, these numbers uh, with the team at, at regular intervals. So, what do we gain um, by implementing this? Um, this, is, uh, this is very common in, in manufacturing. Um, I, I like there was a, a Netflix show recently and uh, they were talking about uh, computer programming languages. And there's a quote, this, they, they interviewed this, this, uh, this man, he said, there's a huge set of decisions and the people who do the programming will be making them and inevitably there will be some combination of circumstances they will not have anticipated. I thought that's interesting because um, it's very true. As, as a programmer, you do need to anticipate, try your best to anticipate 
uh, what are th- what are the outcomes here? What could happen? What could go wrong? Um, so, uh, a better understanding and awareness of the uh, potential problems and how they impact uh, our products that's certainly valuable. Um, how does that uh, you know, anticipating circumstances? Uh, that's good for programming, but that's also good for UX. It's good for design. We we, we want to understand where things could could go wrong. Um, and then this, this FMEA tool gives us the structure for implementing and tracking corrective actions. Uh, so the result, we have improved awareness as a team. Um, we have improved products. Hopefully they don't break as often. And, and then also what we learn from the process that we go through with one project or product, and the FMEA is associated with that, there's this cumulative knowledge that we're starting to acquire of like, in general, this is a good way to do something. So as a company, the products start to increase in in quality over time. So how does this um, directly apply to our design process? Um, Well, uh, what we design must be informed by underlying processes. So I'm going to touch on two points. Uh, First, we have to understand the functional requirements and this includes processes. So if you're designing something, you need to know what's going on or what will be going on at the server, or maybe client server, et cetera, um, to try to understand what, where our space is in, in designing something. Um, so we need a process map so that our, our mental model matches that of reality. Um, and the process map itself needs to be vetted for potential failures. Where can things go wrong? And so the FME in turn, it gives us this, it guides us through this this process to to, to grade and evaluate that. And then secondly, with a clear understanding of the process, we can begin to analyze things like user experience um, and design interfaces that will match this understood mental model. So let's talk about an example. Um, We know that, uh, if we know that clicking forgot password in a given scenario will result in, let's say, a six-digit code being sent to the user, uh, and maybe we're saying it's gonna be sent via text, um, well, we might then say, okay, well, we'll display a, a corresponding screen immediately after which the, the, that allows the user to input the code that they just got. But now if we're analyzing that, we say, well, but there is this potential that the user may not even get the text for a number of reasons. Maybe they didn't have, they lost signal strength or whatever. The, it got held up at a, at a tower or something. We know all kinds of things can happen. So if we're thinking about that, we say, well, you know, if a significant amount of time could pass, well, then maybe we design the interface to maybe prompt them with an alert or a message right off the bat, kind of informing them, setting their expectations for what's gonna happen now. And so then that, that helps the, to helps to kind of uh, smooth over anything that might go wrong. Uh, and, or we could provide them with options for how they reset their password. So there's different ways that we could, different solutions we could propose based on our understanding of what might break, or what could go wrong. And so um, implementation, uh, if we're thinking about this in design terms, or it's gonna improve the process, uh, gives us greater awareness uh, of the potential problems. It informs our UX design choices. Um, and it improves the software. FMEA in particular has far-reaching effects beyond just design and and user experience. Uh, This affects how the developers build the product. It affects how uh, we architect the the entire system. Uh, And, uh, you know, taking into consideration interactions between the user-facing systems and perhaps client uh, third-party in-house systems and, and what we need to be aware of. So it really brings all this awareness together and uh, ultimately it improves the product. So uh, really it's, uh, it's just uh, another good tool in our toolbox.